Hello, and welcome to our lecture on dynamic web content. In some ways, this lecture is the most important lecture of the course. Uh, you know, whether you end up writing in PHP or Angular or who knows what, um, a web application makes request response cycles. That is how a web application is different than, say, a desktop application, even though a desktop application, if it talks to any network resources, is also often making network re uh, requests that are request response cycles. So. This may seem like, why do we even need to know this? But it turns out this is the thing you need to know. This is, this is what you will be comfortable with. And after a while, you'd be like, of course, I know how that works. But this is the foundation of all web applications. And so the web applications that we are working with are <clears throat> sort of three-layer applications. And in the modern world, there's all kinds of variations on this three-layer application. And I don't want to get into right now which is best and which is not. This is sort of the most basic. What we're going to do is learn the basics and then later you can use a fancier user interface. So the way this works is, um, um, let's make sure I get my scribbling thing on, come on, okay. So you're out here, the end user, that's you end user, and you're using a browser. And um, in that browser, you do a click of some kind. And that click goes across the network, and the first thing it encounters is a web server. And then that web server may actually form up some structured query language, like a select statement or something, talk to the database, read some stuff off the disk, and then send the rows back. And then PHP will format these rows up and send the page back to the end user. And <clears throat> so we as a developer eventually be writing PHP that creates SQL. So far, up to this point, what we've been doing is we've actually been functioning as the database administrator, where we're using a tool like phpMyAdmin, we type SQL by hand, and then it goes back to the database, and then we see it in our user interface. But we are going to transition from the role of DBA to the role of developer, and then what we'll do is we'll write application software that will do the SQL on our behalf. And by now you're probably a little tired of writing SQL by hand, and when we start writing software, um, it's easier to write the SQL. <clears throat> So we, the SQL will help, help us write that software. So that's kind of where we're going. Um, and in a sense, it's a, it's a little more than that. And we have this web server that I just showed you that has PHP, MySQL, and Apache in it. And we got this network, and then we got the browser. And we have these requests and responses that are going back and forth. But then we're also going to learn how to do more intelligent stuff in the browser, HTML, CSS, the document object model, JavaScript, and jQuery all work together along with the data and that comes back and forth between the server to then produce the user experience that we see in a web page. So the thing that we're learning about today is the hypertext transport protocol. And HTTP is what we call it. And it was one of the great inventions of Tim Berners-Lee and others at CERN when they first conceived of the web in 1989 and then 1990. Uh, it really was intended as a rather simple protocol to retrieve documents and images and PDFs and then navigate from page to page. And because it was a very small development team that was building the first web servers and the first web browsers, uh, they kept it simple. And frankly, we benefit greatly from that simplicity. And what we'll do is we'll even do this by hand, even though in the future, as we go from HTML1 to HTML2, uh, it'll be a little more difficult to uh, it'll be a little more difficult to do this by hand. But for now, we can do it by hand and learn how it does. The basic concept is you connect to a server, you navigate down and grab a document, and then you get the document back. And the other uh, tremendous innovation uh, was the URL. The URL, and the idea of the URL is it captures three basic ideas, and that is what kind of protocol we're going to use, HTTP, Hypertext Transport Protocol. That's mostly what you see on these, but that's not the only thing that you can see. A host that you're going to connect to, and then a document that you're going to retrieve. And so we split this out. This is how, this is where, and this is what. And that's the U of Uniform Resource Locator, is that uh, you can uh, know what to get, where to get it, and then how to get it all in one long string, as long as you tear the string apart according to the rules of parsing. So, the basic request response cycle is you have a page, you're looking at the page, the, in general it's not permanently connected to the server, you're offline in a sense, you're seeing the page, 
even though there's sneaky stuff going on sometimes in the background, but in a sort of very simple world, you're reading a page, then you click on a link, and then you go get another page uh, from that link. So let me just show you real quick how that works. So I go to a page, then drchuck.com slash page1.htm, and then at this point, I'm not talking to the network, but at some point, I will click on this link, and that will direct my browser to go get another so, sorry for the interruption. Uh, that lecture was being recorded, and I was late to the airport, and I had a small technical difficulty. And so, I had to go to the airport, and I had to fly to South Korea. And uh, so, we're going to pick this lecture uh, back up uh, from South Korea. So, hi, and welcome to South Korea. So, the last thing we were talking about before we had to get on the plane to South Korea was um, what goes on when we retrieve a web page. I'm going to start with... Um, drchuck.com slash page1.htm and so make it a little bigger so we can see it so this is a page we typed this URL into our uh, location bar um, and it looked at HTTP www.drchuck.com is the host that it goes to and page1.htm is the page that it retrieves and so at this point we're not really interacting with the network. The more complex pages do have little background things that they're interacting with the network. But for now, we're not talking to the server in a traditional web page. And if I hover over here, you can see down in the lower left-hand corner that it's telling me where it's about to go. This browser is an application running on my computer, and it's receiving the clicks. When I click on my mouse, it sees that I've clicked on a designated hotspot, an href, a hypertext reference. And that href includes another page to go retrieve. And so the idea is, is that I'm going to click on this. It's going to retrieve a whole new page. And then in the blink of an eye, replace that with, replace what I'm seeing here with the text from that page. So here we go. It's connecting and it's retrieving. And so there's the second page. Okay. And we can click again. If we click on here, we can go back to the first page and we can go back to the second page if we like. So. Now we're going to look at exactly what happens um, here in the uh, browser. When I first started, I was looking at a web page. So that's not how worry about how the page got here, but I typed a URL and I'm looking at a web page. And then this is an application, the browser application running on my Macintosh in this case. And then when I clicked on here, that is an event that happens locally that my browser application, in that case it was Chrome, receives the click event. And it looks at what I clicked on to decide what to do. And so then it makes a connection to the web server on port 80, and it sends a command, this get command. Now we'll take a look at that get command in some detail. And then the web server receives the command, and it goes and reads the data, whatever it's going to do. It looks up page 2.htm, wherever that is, and then it sends that back to us. And the response includes some HTML. So HTML is the markup language that this page coming back comes back to us. And then our browser receives that data, and then it parses it, looks for the less thans and the greater thans, and the hypertext references, the anchor tags, and the hrefs, it looks at all this stuff, and then produces a second page for us. And so that's the request response cycle. Request, response. The page, some action, request, give, make a page, come, the page comes back, and then it's rendered. That process that we just looked at, the request response cycle, is covered by a number of different internet standards. And the internet has been around a long time, since the 1960s, ARPANET, uh, internet, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they produced a lot of standards, and they created an, organizations just to, an organization just to produce these standards for uh, the internet work. And it's called the Internet Engineering Task Force. The standards are called Request for Comments, which is a bit of play on words with the idea that none of these standards are so perfect or solid that you can never comment on them. Even, even years later, we comment on them. And so if we were to look at this RFC 791, it talks about the low-level uh, inter internet datagram protocols. And, and so some of the early standards were about how we built the internet. But then there are more later standards that are things like how the web uh, and how web browsers interact with web servers. And so this is RFC 2616 and it talks about the HTTP 1.1 Hypertext Transport Protocol. So if you want to, go ahead and download this and look through it. And if you look far enough down, you will find in Section 5 how it is that you're supposed to send data if you want to request a new document 
from the web browser. And it's pretty simple. You connect to a server on port 80 and then you ask for the document. And there is a specific thing where you send the get command, you send the document you're looking for, and then you have to tell it which version that you're looking at. Your old, super old stuff was HTTP 1.0. HTTP 1.1 has been around for years. And now actually HTTP 2 is coming out. And so we have to start figuring that stuff out. Now, luckily with HTTP 1.0 and 1.1, they're simple enough that we can hack them. And so what we're going to use is a program called Telnet. Telnet is basically make a connection to this host, www.drchuck.com, and port 80. Now, ports are a way to have multiple applications responding to different kinds of requests. Port 80 is the default HTTP port. We might Telnet to some other port. If we Telnet to port 25, we'd be talking to a mail server. Now, if you're on Windows, if you're on Linux or Mac, this is going to work just as I show you. You can do this on Windows, but you might have to install something. So go Google how to install, uh, go Google how to install Telnet on uh, Windows, and you'll be able to figure it out. You'll install it, and then you'll be able to on Windows uh, pretty much replicate this. Now, not all web servers want to talk this really simple protocol that I'm showing you right now. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to Telnet to port 80, and then we're going to type a carefully constructed command. I'm going to cut and paste this, and then a blank line, and then the server is going to respond with, the, some headers, metadata about the page we're going to get, and then a blank line, and then the actual page. And then you're going to see the connection is closed. This is exactly what's going on in the request response cycle between your browser and the web server. We're go getting back both the headers and the data. The, he the headers are metadata, like when this document was last modified, how to show the document. Text HTML says that this part down here is actually the HTML syntax. And so, um, and, and so if we look at this, we'd see images, etc. If we were retrieving an image, this stuff would look very different. We'd barely be able to understand it, but this would tell us that it was an image. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let me run my terminal. Let me make it a little bigger. Now I'm going to copy the thing I have to type really fast because some web servers don't like it when you don't type fast enough. So I'm going to type, make it a little bigger. Telnet, www.drchuck.com, port 80. The port 80 is important because the default port the Telnet connects to, um, I got a typo here. Default port the Telnet type uh, connects to is not port 80, but web servers by default live on port 80. Okay, so as soon as I hear, I connect here, I can type a command. And I'm going to type the command that I typed, get, and then I have to hit one more new line. And then this is what came back from the server. First, it gives me some header information, and then it gives me the exact page. And so I'm, you know, sort of just hacking in the back door of this thing. But this literally is what the browser does. The browser makes this connection. It uses code to make this connection, like a socket library to make this connection. And then it sends a message. And if you were to look at the RFC, that tells you how to do HTTP. It tells you exactly what the format of these things are. It tells you what these headers look like. 200 means that you you found a document you were supposed to look for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let me, for example, uh, make a mistake on this so you can kind of see how it works. Um, Telnet um, get blah ht oops HTTP slash 1.0. Let's see what it complains about. Okay, so you see here that that I did this and I gave it a URL and it somehow is unhappy with me, 400. So 200 is a series of HTTP codes. This 400 means it was a bad request. So let me type another one and then it gives me a little HTML which would say bad request. Um, so let me, let me do another one and make another mistake. Uh, that one's gonna work, sorry. Let me see if HTTP colon slash slash www.drchuck.com slash page 9.htm HTTP slash 1.0. I have to type this fast because, yeah, it got it. Okay. It, I typed it too slow and it said, you're not really a browser. Browsers talk faster than that. So now I'm going to run it again. And this time I've cut and pasted that so I can type it faster. Okay. Telnet, paste, type really fast, be like a browser. Okay. So. Uh, this is another error message. I wanted it to give me a 404 not found. It says, oh, there's a couple of other things. Um, but basically, 
you know, when you type bad errors or do this, the server and the browser are communicating using this protocol. And it's not so important that you know this protocol. It is important that you're able to understand roughly what's going on. So if you get an error code or something else, you have a basic understanding of what's going on in behind. And so I'll just call your attention to uh, uh, a fun thing you can see if you uh, saw the Matrix 2 movie. You saw Trinity hacking into um, the power grid to shut the power grid down in the uh, uh, a critical moment of the movie. Uh, a former student of my mind was the one that actually wrote this. And the original script said that uh, Trinity was going to be using some cool full screen interface to break in. And, and he said to the Wachowski brothers, he said, that's not how people break into computers. People break in using command line and crazy little stuff like that. So this is rewritten. And this Nmap is actually software that people do use to break into computers. And so this is a pretty accurate. He actually set up some vulnerable computers and ran software to break into those vulnerable computers. And then they recorded the session and it was kind of impressive. And now it's become kind of a cool thing to actually try to make the breaking into computers seem more like it's really done. So um, not, not that I want any of you to have a future in uh, hacking computers, but you might have a future in protecting the security of computers and knowing all these sort of back end uh, command line things is kind of essential for that.